We've come to Cantork in County Cork to speak to Michael Winters about his stable star Rebel Fitz and how he's coming back from injury. We're also going to get a feel of the atmosphere that's on the yard. Well, Mick, one of your stable stars, Rebel Fitz, he's, uh, how, did you re how did your relationship with him come about? Um, we had him inside in the yard as a young horse stopped out and um, he was showing a nice horse in the very start and John Fitzgibbon, the neighbour of ours up the road, said that the sweet pins in Kentuck that they were looking for a nice young horse and I said it to the owners um, of the horse and they were happy to change hands with him and since then he's been a lucky horse yeah. right up to now. And I mean he's been extremely consistent, you know, when did you know that he had that bit of speciality about him? Well, you know, it, it, sometimes some horses show very easy, other horses you think you see it and they might never materialise but he always looked it had the class of a horse and the only problem was he was very highly, high, highly sensitive I suppose and highly strong but if he was there to keep him in one piece there was always going to be plenty of success in him like. Yeah. And the Galway hurdle in 2012, I mean that must have, what do you remember of that? Well uh, I remember standing in the hallway there doing an interview and saying that if we won we'd get such a thing done and we'd be in history and we'd be kind of when we are dead we'd be remembered and and you know I suppose it all came to pass that we're still alive in that path was, but we had a great time we met an awful lot of people and you know there was an awful lot of goodwill attached to the thing and we met an awful lot of people and I suppose really we couldn't ask for any more. And then of course the flip side of it he suffered an injury just what happened there? We had we were, couldn't wait to live him out in the field for a break freshen him back and things and he looked tremendous out there and we brought him back in and he the uh, one of the shoes pulled off and the ferry was in the air and they shot him. So I meant we swam him for a day or two while we were waiting for him to settle into the thing. Next I see a bit of fluid in the side of his joint and he went down to feather then he was scanned and it showed a, what you call um, an enlargement of the small tendon going from the joint to the hoof. But there was no tear or anything so it should settle down. So we put him away. We didn't want him turning then and stuff. So he went down to an aqua treadmill below, belonged to Rory Dean and Carlo. And we brought him home during the week and did great work done. He had six weeks doing three miles a day, morning and evening inside in this spa. And he loved it to bits. And I'd say it's top class. But we brought him home now and I'd say we have um, good facilities alongside us here. And Tom O'Flynn's and, and Paul, his son, they have a, a swimming pool. And we'll swim him regular there and it'll keep the weight off the legs. And um, hopefully we'll be back in track maybe for this or maybe Tipperary in October again. Well, fingers crossed. I know yeah. everybody wants to see him back, mm -hmm. Mick. He's he's truly a fantastic looking horse, and uh, yeah, I think I think he's definitely given you a lot of fun days. Thank you very much, and I hope to see him back soon. Yeah, thank you very much. What are you doing with the dog by your side? Well, we'll take him for the 26th of August the Bob and Cox right? So the sponsor meeting by the Cantor DA crowd. So they'll be running there and that. And uh, the meeting just sponsor it for my late brother, Dino, <coughs> Michael's uh, uh, father. There'll be steak running there in commemoration of him. And uh, what do you think the main difference between training a dog and a horse is? Oh, it's almost the same thing. You've got the, the, the head going to give them what they need and size them up and things like that. Yeah. And um, I believe that you have a secret weapon on the yard with the fur brushes. You might just tell us how did that come about for the horses? Well, the, the horses above in my own place in the land, like the store horses. Every time you uh, cut bushes, they'd uh, pick out the fur bush and, and peel it. They'd peel the back off it. They were mad for it. So that's how we cut on onto that. And uh, with the dogs now, we're giving these goat's meat, which is the, the, the other secret weapon. <laughs> and why, for, for the horses, why is the, fur, why is the bark on the fur so good? And for the dogs, why is the goat's milk so good? Uh, well, they have great vitamins in it. You see, the goats and things, they eat everything, leaves and uh, everything they can come up to. And uh, I'd say just feel vitamins in it. And this is supposed to be great for eczema and people and everything if you would drink goat's milk. And uh, the houses anyway, they'll go for the fur bushes. As you see more there now, uh, they'll go for them before any other bush or anything. They nearly prefer to eating, feeding them to have a horse of a fur bush. And they just peel them just like a barber. 
Fantastic. Well, Teddy, best to luck with the dog, and I hope you continue to give the fur brushes to the horses. It must be doing something for them. They're winning left, right, and center. Well, I know it's about Michael and the, the, the main ingredients, but uh, that's what's happening anyway. But uh, he might be in the car track on the 22nd of August. That's the day the, the, the meeting is on. We'll see you there. Okay, yeah.